In this video I want to show you structure and features of metaphysical function or short MPF in Reactor 6 by Native Instruments. This conceptual synthesizer is available for free in the Reactor user library, but it's available for owners of the Reactor full version only, since the download of content in this library is not available for users of the Reactor player. There are plenty of versions of the MPF, here I am using the version by Mark Bonington. In a nutshell, I can say that we have two sections of multiple oscillators, section A and section B, which are about to be added to another or multiplied by one another or anything between those two mixing styles. We also can add a sample and wrap the whole thing up with some nice audio effects. Also, we have a very nice visualization of this mathematical process. This may sound a bit scientific and nerdy, but even if you don't know exactly what you're doing in detail, you can still have tons of fun with it. When I need a unique self-made drone sound or a soundscape for ambient music or minimal techno, this is always my first choice of software. Alright, let's get to it. Here in section A we have three sine wave oscillators, one triangle oscillator which can be shaped via this knob here, and one rectangular oscillator which can also be shaped here, and here is a noise generator. Each oscillator can be course pitched with this button or by dragging from the enter screen or by setting a value in this enter screen by double clicking it and typing. The value of 60 is equal to middle C, changes of this value in each direction correspond to one half tone for every number you change. Fine pitch can only be adjusted in the enter screen below. Just grab it and drag it. This only provides positive values from 0 to 1. 1 would equal 1 half tone. Of course you can also control everything with a MIDI controller of your choice by right clicking, choosing MIDI Learn and move your controller. Beyond the oscillators you'll find the loudness automation recorders and enablers. You've got up to 30 seconds of time for automating the loudness of each oscillator. If you want to record you just activate the enabler here. And even if there is already a recorded automation saved, just click inside the enter screen below. Now recording is initiated and starts as soon as you begin to drag the volume level. When you're finished with your recording, simply click inside the enter screen again and listen to your automation. If you are unsatisfied with the automation, just hit the record box and try again. Above all oscillators you can decide whether or not each oscillator should be automatically pitch modulated by P1 or P2 or even both here in the middle section. Here is the on button to activate modulation and if you enable P1 and automation is recorded you'll hear the oscillator pitching. Next to this on-off pitch modulation buttons, you can decide if those modulations should affect the fine pitch or the coarse pitch. If the switch is grey, it means a coarse pitch takes place. Click it and it changes to yellow, which tells us the oscillator will be fine pitched. This is coarse. And here's some fine pitching. Mix level of section A is right here next to the phase meter. This mix level can also be automated manually with enabler and record box. 
on the left side you'll find the filter of section A which can also be defined as a slave to the main filter which is located here in the FX section. This would make sense if you want your filter modulated since only the main filter can be modulated. And of course we can determine cutoff and resonance of filter A here as long as it's not slaved to the main filter. I already mentioned P1 and P2. Automation works the same way as any modulation here in MPF. Dragging the handle to the right will cause an upward pitch. Dragging it to the left will pitch it downward. Bring it back to zero position for turning pitch off. Both modulators have a portamento button to the right, where you can choose between harsh and smooth note changes, which is best audible with a coarse pitch modulation. Fully left, we hear the notes changing harshly. Moving it clockwise, the transition between notes will grow increasingly softer. You can also activate MIDI pitch control, which means that as long as you haven't enabled the automation, the pitch will follow the notes you play on a MIDI keyboard. In the little screen on the left side, you see the value of your currently pitch shift caused by MIDI control or your modulation. Next thing would be the loop section, which is right here. You can drop a sample directly into the black window and choose the loop area with this yellow handle right here below. Be warned though, the selection of the loop area is pretty rough, so you better use prepared loops or else you will very likely get clicks or glitches. Can be very charming, but may not always be your approach. Anyway. To set the start point of the loop area, just grab the left end of the handle and drag it. The right end adjusts the loop point and you can move around the whole loop area by grabbing the handle just in the middle and place it somewhere in your sample. Any changes of the adapted loop area will only apply as soon as the loop runs to the end of the previous area. You can define and automate the loudness here and also define and automate the play direction and speed of the loop. When direction is in the middle position, the yellow marker disappears, which means there will be no sound from the sampler, since this is the zero point between forward and backward. Moving upward from this point, the sample will be played forward increasingly faster. Moving downward, the sample will be played backward. We'll find coarse and fine pitch on the right side and we can apply pitch modulation here. This selection provides P1 and P2 in coarse or fine modulation or no modulation at all. You can save up to 128 different samples and choose between them in the top and the screen. To the far left side there is a button for the main volume of the loop section. Next we look at section B. This is pretty much like section A but it contains some different oscillators. From left to right we have a white or Geiger noise generator, we have two sine wave oscillators, one triangular oscillator and two different kinds of rectangular waves. Noise Geiger, Triangle and the Rectangles can be shaped here as we know already from Section A and you can switch here for getting either White Noise or Geiger Noise. If it's on you'll hear Geiger Noise, if it's off there will be White Noise generated. To hear this difference more clearly we move the slider to Multiplicated Mix and listen to both noise styles.
Of course, the loudness modulation beyond works exactly as we know from section A. And we can also apply some pitch modulation here by using the movement of P1 and P2 again. Here is the mixing level of section B, which of course is automatable. And the filter of B also works the same way as in section A. Alright, let's have a look at the FX section in the top row. Here we have a filter. We can staplessly choose from low pass to high pass. In the middle position I am guessing a bandpass filter. We can blend in the filtering with this mixer. And we can adjust cutoff and resonance here, which can also be automated with enabler and recorder. Distortion is pretty basic. Mix it, adjust it and automate both. Spin is a stereo delay, T1 is the time for the left delay, T2 is for the right side and the fine adjustment refers to T1. Blend the delay times in and add some positive or negative feedback. And again here is the automation section. There are two switches where you can link T1 to T2 or T2 to T1 or even both. Whatever that means. I have to admit that I'm not very sure on that subject. Just play around with it and decide which sounds best. The Resacord contains 20 different styles. A feedback control which goes from minus 1 to 1. A pitch control from minus 24 to 24 half tones. A fine pitch which only provides positive values up to one half tone. And a modulation selector with P1, P1 fine, P2 or P2 fine. Mix and overall feedback can be dialed in and modulated. Be aware that the Resacord has two feedback loops. If this one shows zero feedback, changes that the other feedback will have no effect and vice versa. The reverb provides six different rooms from tiny to endless. You can decide whether you'd like the reverb be placed before the Resacord pre or after the Resacord post. And you can mix it and automate the mix. This volume button sets the final volume and stereo width goes from narrow to broad. In this area to the lower right we find two restart buttons. The first will restart any automation as soon as another one will be activated or recorded. This is crucial when you want to set an exact timing between two or more oscillator automations. The second one will restart all automation anytime you'll hit this button. The randomizer randomizes everything. Since there is no undo button, do not press it when you have an unsafe sound. That being said, the randomizer is pretty fun and gives you a pretty good insight on what's possible with this fine piece of software. The speed button provides four stages of automation speed. Depending on the stage, you can vary the automation time between 30, 14, 9 or 7 seconds. And we have a mute button which mutes all sound. As mentioned in the introduction, we have two different kind of mixing styles here above the phase meter. On the left side we can add section B to section A, on the right side we can multiply both sides by one another. In the middle we have a mixer where we can mix between both mixing styles. This mixer is of course again automatable. And lastly there is the graphic visualization of our sound with a zoom function for adjusting a proper range. In this very window we find two more sometimes hidden sliders. Mix level sets the level of left 1 and right 1. Spin level controls left 2 and right 2. 
In any case, this has a huge impact on the loudness of the sound. And most of the time when you randomize and you hear nothing, this is because one of them or both showed very low values. They disappear, however, every time you click in the screen. And, it really took me some time to figure that out, they come back to the screen when you click on one of the knobs in the filter or the EQ. That's it! I really really love this synth and I hope you'll have nearly as much fun with it as I do. To give you a quick overlook I will play around with some randomized sounds in the next video and in the next weeks I will come up with some MPF sessions. Thanks for watching!